Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 307 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Uh, 306 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. It should be 307. Last week would have been 306, but I missed uh, it. Uh, and uh, it's it's because I'm uh, I'm rapidly deteriorating uh, in in the few weeks before my surgery. You know how I know that I've gotten a lot worse. The other day I was uh, in the center of Frankston mm. and I was waiting for my girl. She was getting coffee somewhere. I was waiting outside and two Christian missionaries approached me to start uh, preaching about God and, and asking if I had found Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I've officially hit that level of if you see me in the middle of Frankston, you're going to assume that I'm a heroin addict that really needs to find God. Mm. You look at me and you go, oh, look at this guy down on his luck. He, he needs he needs help from from a higher being. Like not even not even uh, humans can help him. This man needs God. <laughs> so that was good. Have you ever been approached by the, the Jesus freaks in Frankston? No, not by the Jesus freaks. That's good. Yeah. Who have you been approached? By. Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Right. The, the other week. Yeah. To They're, they've written me on this podcast. I've read out several handwritten letters that they've they've written. You know the whole Jehovah's Witness thing. Their whole thing is uh, to get into heaven, you have to save other people. Yeah. And they also think there's a limited amount of spots in heaven. Like there's actually a hard limit. Like once once we shut the door, it's we're we're at capacity. It's full, and no one's going to leave heaven. You know, like no one's no one no one up there is gonna be like, ah, I wonder what's set in hell. Mm. Maybe we'll, do you wanna go check out purgatory? No one's doing that. <laughs> so uh, but which is which is already insane, right? That they think that there would be a limit. Like yep. God's so good, but there's a limit, you know. Like I'll look, I'll i am only gonna let a couple of you freaks in. <laughs> all right, I'm not that good. I created you all, but I only love a finite number of you. You know, God's very introverted. <laughs> uh, uh, but but so that's the hard limit. That's fucking ballistically insane. Yeah. But what's even crazier than that is they think that the limit hasn't run out yet and they're going to get a spot. Yeah. Like of all the Jehovah's Witnesses as, as, as there are and have ever been, you, you reckon you're, you're the best one? Or that... Or that Ever since they were created, there was that God's just been like, ah, what if someone better than you comes around? Get out of here, <laughs> you know. It's full. I'm sorry, guys. You know, heaven for Jehovah's Witness is like a fucking Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> She's up there with all the Swifties fucking dancing, and there's a parking lot full of fucking freaks who didn't get the ticket <laughs> dancing. You see that shit? That is so cool. <laughs> I see that, dude. The only time I've ever had people standing outside my concert was when it was getting protested, and I was not sold out that night. <laughs> there was, I had a hundred seats, and only thirty of them were sold, and only twenty-five of the people had the balls to show up. And the other five got scared. There were a hundred fucking Tibetans out the front, chanting "Lewis Spears, not funny." No one was singing my songs. You know, how good would that be if every time I did a show there was a hundred cunts out the front singing straight out of Frankston? So anyway, the Jehovah's Witnesses are nuts. Yeah, two Asian Jehovah's Witness came to my house and yeah. they, they asked if I knew of any Asian neighbours. Right. I live in Karim Downs. There's no Asians in Karim Downs. <laughs> no, we got rid of them. <laughs> I said, sorry, I just moved in. I don't know. Yeah, you, you should have gone, oh, no, sorry, there's none here, and you should you should lock your doors. <laughs> Run. Yeah. That's good. Um, and so they weren't, so they, they were like. Uh, they so, weren't looking for me. <laughs> so, so they weren't like, well, while you're here, we'll try and save you. They were just like, you got any Asians? Well, I did give them a bad first impression. I opened the door, saw who they were, and I closed the door. <laughs> And as I was closing, they say, no, 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 we need help. And I said, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. So that's like, uh, well, maybe maybe that's really needed because how many Jehovah's Witnesses have, have there ever been? I would I would imagine that the, the genesis of Jehovah's Witnesses was just all white people. So the heaven's getting fucking full up. Because you know when you have, if you have five, say you got 5,000 seats, if you have 5,000 of something, right, you're fucking giving them out to anyone. Yeah, yeah, you, oh, you kicked a dog, but you felt bad about it? Come into heaven. Oh, you molested a kid, but you said, sorry, I forgive you, welcome in. But then you give away a few thousand and you're like, oh, fuck, there's only white people in here. Uh, let's, let's make this a little bit more strict. No more remorseful murderers. You know, and and then and then you you keep letting them in, and then you go fuck. We've only got one black guy, 
and uh, and and he wears plaid shirts, and he you know like he's he's culturally white. So we need to diversify this shit up. So I think that's actually really good that they were like, uh, get hey, paste face. Where the fuck are the Asians at? All right, we're trying to save some of these real motherfuckers. Brings up a good point. Like, how many black Mormons are there? Uh, I I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I was thinking the other day. Uh, I saw this article of um, uh, just this anti-vaxxer going, uh, oh, there's like, there are no, there's no COVID in the Amish communities. There's no COVID and, <laughs> and, there's, and there's none of these heart attack deaths yep. like there are from the jab. Uh, and they don't get cancer either. <laughs> and, uh, and I read that and I went, Hey, fuckhead, they don't have hospitals. <laughs> they don't. They, could you imagine a fucking Amish person in an MRI machine? Ah! There's no way they're going to get in that thing. What do you mean? What's a magnet? There's no fucking way a guy can do that shit. And then they go, and you know what else? Because they're not vaccinated, they don't have any rates of autism. I'm sorry. Have you seen an Amish person? <laughs> they all have autism. Don't tell me that a cunt who can build a house in six days doesn't have tism, all right? That guy is, is looking at fucking timber more than, than he is at the eyes of his own wife. That guy's autistic as fuck. The only people I've ever seen abstain from something with with such uh, with <laughs> with such dedication is like an autistic kid who doesn't like yellow food. You know, that's that. Oh, no Amish person has autism. All right, dude. How many of them have you had a conversation with? <laughs> Could you imagine an an Amish like uh, like wife bringing their their little girl into to a to a psychologist? <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, I think there's some. I think there's something wrong with my daughter. She doesn't. Um, she doesn't get along well with boys, and then she won't be able to have have twelve kids. And then who's going to run my farm? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Oh yeah. Uh, th so the Christians they came up to me, and they go, "Hey man," and uh, I just uh, I just thought they were they wanted a cigarette or something like that. Cause, cause that's the thing about these, uh, these Frankston Christians streetwise, you know, cause that's their thing. They're trying to save, they, they, they do good work. They're trying to save people who need help. You know, they're like, Oh, look at this guy who's cooked half his brain with crack rock. Maybe we could trick him into giving us a donation and then say that he saved his soul, which, which makes him feel better. Fair enough. And they come up to me like, hey, man, how you going? And I was like, hey, hey. And then they didn't ask me for anything. And I'm like, okay, uh, fans? And then they didn't ask. They didn't go, hey, are you that? They didn't do that. They just asked me a question. And, uh, and, and then I was like, what the fuck is going on? Am I about to get robbed? <laughs> I, was, I was literally like, okay, I'm, which one am I going to hit first? Uh, and, uh, and, then, and then they just go, uh, do you know Jesus, man? I was like, oh, there it is. There it is. And I went, yeah, I've heard of him. And what's really good about <laughs> that is just the amount of fucking silence that was after that, yeah. where uh, it really put them on the back foot because uh, because if I, if I just go, yeah, I've heard of him, they're thinking, all right, is this guy religious? Is he an edgy atheist or is he really slow? And they tried to work that out. And then, and they, they tried to play because there's a, there's silence is such a, a powerful tool mm. and, uh, and they tried to use it on me, but, but I have the power of finding it really funny to make you feel very awkward. So I just, yeah, I've heard of him. Oh, cool, man. So, uh, so <laughs> I, do you like believe in God? And I went, yeah. <laughs> Right, so like, um, so uh, do you play basketball? And they <laughs> just changed the topic, and uh, and then they and then they went. So, uh, so like, what do you think of like uh, like Jesus or like ha have you have you let Jesus into your life? And and uh, and I said, I, yeah, I think he's a real guy. I think he I think he was definitely real. Like he absolutely like he's on the census, you know. <laughs> They were like, have you let Jesus in your life? And I was like, as far as like acknowledging that, that the existence of 
Jesus Christ, Yeshua, or whatever his actual name was. I was like, yeah, man, he's, he's on the census, dude. Tick that box, you know? And they were like, right, mm. <laughs> They were just so confused. And they said, and, and the guys were just like, because uh, they try to do the whole subtle thing where I don't think they want to have a conversation about God because I've gone to youth group, Christian youth group, uh, voluntarily, actually. My parents never took me. I was just like, I want to go and see what it's all about. There was one around the corner and I went there. And even when you're in the church, they don't talk to you about it. They're just like, come on, man, come join the community and let's have a cool time. And and then they that's how they get you. Um, and, uh, and then, but I just kind of just confused the fuck out of him. So we just had to go hardball and he goes, do you believe in God? And I went, yeah, man, I think, I think there's a God. Yeah. And he was like, he he, I, he wanted to shake me and go, what book? What fucking book? And I just went, look, I, I just think, um, and, and, and he goes, so what do you think about Jesus Christ and, and Christianity? I said, look, man, I just, I just think that if God's real, we couldn't comprehend him. Because if we could comprehend him, he wouldn't be God. Because uh, he'd be, you know, it's like uh, an ant can't comprehend me, you know. I, how the fuck? How if I could look at God and understand him, he couldn't. He couldn't possibly be God. I think that there's a creator, and I think that evolution is more evidence to some kind of like intelligent design because everything works with each other. And I think someone just fucking snapped their fingers and set it into motion and. And and who fucking knows? And uh, and I think that all of the all of the religions have the best grasp of of what a human brain could possibly comprehend of what a create the creator is. Apart from all of the murder and and uh, and and don't wear this fabric and and if you eat this food and and if and if I see your hair, you'll fucking you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a little bit off, but in terms of like ah, he he made everything and he wants you to have a good life. Cool. Uh, and then uh, that really confused them. And then and then he goes, uh, "What do you do for work, man?" And I went, oh, "I'm a comedian." And that scared the fuck out of them because because they were they. I said, "I'm a comedian," and then they heard, "Oh my god, it's Ricky Gervais. He hates us." Mm. And then this 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 other guy came up and was like, "Fucking is that fucking Lewis Spears, bro?" And then I just started getting swamped by fans, and they had no fucking clue what to do. They were so confused. And then. Uh, and then fans walked away and they were like, what's going on? And then Jazz came up and they, she goes, hey, how you going? And then she thought, they thought she was a fan. And then I was like, hey. And then she goes, do you want to come with me? And I went, yeah. And then I walked away and then, and that, and I, I think I would have just fucking baffled the fuck out of the two of them of like, man, we tried to save this one guy, but then he got surrounded by his followers and then some random girl he's never seen before just took him away. He's, you know, he's lost. <laughs> um, but despite looking so awfully sick that missionaries approach me in the street, um, I finally have a surgery date, which is uh, fucking awesome. I have it locked in for August 24. August 24, I get my new head. Uh, so mark that down on your calendars, August 24, when I get my new chin, it is over for you. And I got my surgery plan and dude, I, I am going to look so fucking different in, in, in all of the research that I've done online of, uh, jaw movements and how much your face changes and everything like that. The craziest, biggest movement is they, they cut your lower jaw and then they move it forward. The biggest movement I'd ever seen online was like 13 millimeters forward. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And all I kind of knew was like, I want more than five because most people who got five or less, they felt like their breathing improved a lot, but not enough to justify the pain of the surgery. So I was like, I would like at least seven, between seven and, and 13, I think is what I what I am gonna get. Uh, 13 being the, the crazy big surgery. Anyway, they scanned my skull. He cut up my head in a bunch of different ways in his program. And uh, my my movement is going to be 24 millimeters, <laughs> which is like a, actually a full inch forward, but it's not just forward. So I thought I was just going to get my lower jaw move forward and my upper jaw move forward. It's not that he actually has to completely change the shape of my skull. He's uh, moving the lower jaw forward and he's cutting the tip of my chin off and putting that 
uh, forward as well to match my new strong jawline. We all know about this. Then he, uh, that's 24 millimeters. Then the top one comes forward, I think between 11 and 13 millimeters forward, right? And we knew that was going to happen. I've said that, but it's also uh, going to get moved up towards my nose. So the bone that my front teeth sit in and my lower jaw, that is actually going to be angled so it doesn't slope downwards and it's going to be moved up towards my nose. So there's going to be like a basically a finger, this finger here, this is not going to exist anymore. So my mouth, my mouth is going to be where my top lip is because it's moving up. Mm. And then my top lip's going to be moved up. And then all of this uh, sunkenness that's in my face underneath my cheekbones, that will... Uh, not disappear, but will look less sunken because there'll be bone filling that, and uh, and the whole thing's going to be completely differently reangled. And he goes because all of this is going to completely change your lips. He's gonna he's also going to give me a lip flip on my top lip to make my top lip go like that because the teeth are going to move forward, which might make my top lip completely disappear like that oh. because that's what would happen. Oh, right. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm it's I'm just getting an entirely new fucking face. I'm going to post photos of the planned surgery because they they scan my face and everything and it's just uh it's just fucking mental. Who's that guy? Who is that guy? <laughs> Look, even my nose, like the tip of my nose is going to move up and then the 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 like uh ridge is moving and yeah, where my where my mouth moves it goes up and forwards and my chin and my lips and my and everything is fucking changing so it's like i would i was trying to accept <laughs> like the the most wild version of what i would look like and it's about three times more wild than than what i thought uh would happen which is just crazy um so yeah august 24 it's over for you well, that's not entirely true because August 24, I'm actually going to get a lot uglier because my, my head's going to blow up like a balloon. Mm. So, look, August 24, that I won't say it's the end for you. I won't say it's over for you, but it's the beginning of the end for you. So uh, about six to six to eight weeks uh, of recovery time and, and that's when I'll be able to, like, properly go back to work and perform probably – but then it's still going to be maybe two months after that that the all of the swelling goes down. So not even I'm going to know what I look like until like four months after the surgery <laughs> or more. Um, but I'm very excited for it, and the surgeon's really confident. Uh, but that's not that's not true actually. I wasn't excited about it. Uh, I was very nervous about it because it just completely blew me out how different I'm going to look. Um, and I was freaking out about it until I went down to the cafe one day, and I was sitting there and I was writing in my my notepad like I do every morning and I was actually writing about how fucking it was this was like the day after the meeting I'm like oh my god I don't know what to think about this I'm gonna look so different am I even gonna look like me like I don't know this is weird uh and then there's this woman and she's talking it was her dad's birthday had her family over and she was there she had a kid there and she was talking about her husband who just had the exact same surgery that I did five days ago Oh and I go, I just had to interrupt. I was like, excuse me, are you talking about this surgery? She goes, yeah, I am. I'm like, the, like the top and the bottom, like the exact same surgery. And she goes, yeah, my husband got it done five days ago. And I was like, oh man, that's crazy. And she goes, who's your surgeon? And I go, this guy. And she goes, same surgeon. So uh -huh. same surgeon, same procedure. And uh, and her husband had, I was like, what, what was his movement? Do you remember? She goes, 30 millimeters. I'm like, what the fuck? And she goes, yeah, his chin was much more recessed than yours. She goes, yours is pretty bad, but his was worse. Like, I was like, if he, if his was worse than mine, I'm impressed that he had kids. Like, what a personality on the guy. You know, like, those kids are going to be very disappointed when they grow up and they don't have daddy's chin. <laughs> because because they have daddy's former chin. Um, but I, I, I asked her, because obviously I'm doing this for sleep apnea, and uh, I was... Uh, I was talking to Jazz and I was talking to the surgeon about it and they didn't really know. I was like, surely after the surgery, my sleep isn't going to get better straight away because I'm going to be swollen and everything and it's going to be all, all fuck. Like I'll be sleeping actually worse. Uh, so I asked her and I'm like, is he sleeping better? And she goes, immediately he had the best night of his, of his life 
sleeping, even with all of the pain and all of the swelling and having to sleep sitting up, he, he was breathing. So I was like, oh man, I almost cried. I was like, that's amazing. Oh. So re it's, it's fucking, what is it? Three weeks away, less than three weeks. It's like 21 days or so, or 19 days, I think. No, 18 days. What the fuck? That's crazy. So uh, 18 days for me uh, and I'm getting the surgery. And then we think like six, six to eight weeks, man. And, and I'll be back to making videos probably. I don't know. It'll, it'll depend on, on my recovery and how well I can talk. But I think, it's, I think it'll be pretty similar to the first surgery in terms of recovery. But I'm not going to have the gap tooth and the lisp and everything. Uh, it's like when, I, when I'm able to, to talk, uh, unlike the last time when I was able to make videos, I'll also be able to speak like clearly because <laughs> before I was like I could talk but I could not be understood <laughs> so awesome when do you get your braces off uh between like three to six months after the surgery uh it kind of depends on if my teeth are in the position they're supposed to be so my teeth are in the right position now and theoretically my teeth won't move because you're actually moving the bone that the teeth are wedged in so when you move those and if they if they mesh properly and I heal well, they'll be able to come off straight away. So if the orthodontist is happy, then uh, yeah. So it could be like uh, by fucking Christmas, it's all like even the, the braces are out. Um, but uh, I'm not bothered by the braces at all. You know, I think they're funny. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm very very hopeful. And it's, uh, it's almost over. I know that I've been talking about it l literally since 2000 and fucking 20, uh, but it's actually, uh, it's actually ending. And, and on, on, a, on a really, really serious note, guys, um, please just take your girlfriend out on a really nice date. Uh, take your mum out uh, for, for lunch and, you know, and, and even, even just, just buy your grandma flowers or, or just say, good, say goodbye to all of them because, um, and it's, it's not something that I want to do. It's not something that I'm going out there intentionally to do to just take everyone's, everyone's women. But it is, a, it is an inevitable consequence of this surgery. And the surgeon said that as well. Um, so enjoy your time with your women. Uh, <laughs> Dude, speaking of women, you know what I watched on the weekend that I hi actually highly recommend that everybody watch. Okay, and I would, I would, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but go and download the 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 Nine Go app <laughs> on your phone or on your computer or on your smart TV. Download the Nine Go streaming app for Channel Nine and fucking dude, watch the World Championship swimming, not the swimming events. Watch the women's diving. It is amazing. Not because of the skill on display, which is obviously impressive, but you have to watch it just to see how much unbelievably, unfathomably, impossibly better the Chinese divers are than everyone else. Like, it's not even fucking close. I watched two, like, rounds of it. It was the semifinals and the finals. And in both cases, there were two Chinese girls in it, second and, f and first. Oh. by a hundred points, which is like a full round of diving. Both of them, so first and second were, were within like, uh, so the second place was like a full more than 100 points ahead of third, which is insane. But then first place was like 50 in front of second. So it's like, you don't even have a chance at coming close to getting second. Or if you get third, it's gonna be like by, by an insanely wild margin. I was watching that shit and uh, it's one of the, diving is one of those sports where you can have no fucking clue the rules, what's going on, why anything means anything. But you, you can go, ah, that was a shit one. <laughs> you know, it's one of those sports. Like when you're watching, when you're watching a team sport like footy or, or, or even golf, you watch it and you go, I, I, yeah, I don't really know like why that was good or bad or, or whatever, unless you really know the sport. This is something that anyone can turn on. You've never seen or cared or given a fuck about diving in your life. And you go, this chick sucks, get her out. All right, we're back. Sorry, technical difficulties. 100% Keelan's fault, I can assure you. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> yeah, kill, all killer's fault. Don't worry about it. Um, anyway, women's diving, okay? If I was uh, a woman diver and I had to go up against these these ruthless Chinese women, I would have to quit my sport. I don't think that would be like every time you go up to uh, perform stand-up comedy, you're on the bill with Dave Chappelle and it is judged. <laughs> But here's the thing. Imagine if Dave Chappelle was literally a 14-year-old Chinese girl. The, she's 14. the best Chinese, the best diver in the world is a 14-year-old Chinese girl called, called I, I'm not even going to try and say her name because I can't remember it, so I'm going to accidentally say something racist. Um, but uh, it's it, in fucking sane. Like, Italy sends out this girl covered in tattoos. She's fucking jacked, like, real athletic, strong-looking woman. Does this amazing dive that I go, that's that's so incredible. Gets fours across the board out of ten, like, bad. Oh. And, then, and then after that, this fucking Chinese 14-year-old climbs up the fucking ladder. I'm like, where's her mum? What if she's scared? It's really high for such a little girl. And she does some of the most... I'm, I've only seen that shit in anime. The flips she was fucking doing and she did, she hits the water and you, you i mean you might as well have fucking have her phase through the water it's like she didn't even i don't know what they're doing to those chinese girls but they're equipping them with molecular technology because she doesn't make a splash it's you gotta watch it the the women's 10 meter diving is some of the most amazing shit there not just to see how how much better the chinese girls are and i'm saying girls like literally as in little girls i think the best one was like 17 and then the other one was like 16 like they're children and all of the other girls are like and here we have this uh 24 year old old hag getting up to do to get up to score 100 points lower than a chinese little girl like that's the, i think to me that's the the most amazing aspect of the women's diving is not how good the chinese girls are but just to see like uh the 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 american girl who's 24 like just continue to try <laughs> <laughs> like knowing that best case scenario she gets she gets 100 points less than a girl 10 years younger than her and i was watching i was going man these people these girls are amazing and like when when every other country even germany <clears throat> right when they did well and they got a good score they'd be like oh fuck yeah awesome when the chinese girl she literally got tens across the board there's five judges I think I think how the scoring works. There's actually seven judges, sorry, and I believe how the scoring works is the two highest scores and the two lowest scores get disqualified. They don't count, and then you're left with three scores, and that's th that. Those three are added up, combined by the difficulty of the dive. So the the difficult dive is like three point two. So say you get thirty points, it's thirty times three point two, and that's what you get. And dude, this chick she gets like fucking seven tens, which is insane. And, and she looks at the score and, and she's just fucking <laughs> doesn't smile, doesn't emote, doesn't look disappointed, doesn't look happy. She's just like, I'm diving. Uh, it's fucking insane. And even her coach is exactly like that. Like the, the other coaches, when they do a bad dive, when they do a good dive, they you can see. They go, oh, no. Or they go, oh, yeah. The Chinese coach, when she does like the, the best dive that even the fucking commentator is like, they have nothing to say. They, every other person's dive, they're like, oh, she should have tucked a little bit more there or her, her toes weren't pointed or she wobbled a little bit before she dove. Every single time the Chinese girl dives, everyone shuts the fuck up and goes, wow. <laughs> even, the, even the commentator is like, wow, that was... Um, I mean, if I was to give some feedback, I would... I mean, I can't... Wow. And uh, I was watching this... And I was like, man, how do they train these athletes? So I so I typed into YouTube, how do um how do Chinese how does China train their their divers? Uh, and it's it was so interesting. It's just it's uh they've come up with this new method called child abuse. It's just <laughs> it's just fucking horrible. She's the the world champion diver is like the son of a gymnastics coach. 
or the sorry, the, the daughter of a gymnastics coach. His mum's a gymnast, her mum's a gymnastics coach, and her dad's like uh, some other gymnast as well. And they've just bred this fucking genetic superhuman who's meant for flipping and jumping. And they put them in these schools and they start training at diving from four years old. Four years old, and then if but up to eight years old, and then they, and when they hit eight, they go. If you don't want it, get the fuck out of here. Get in a factory or something, you loser. This is for winners only. And I'm watching this fucking this news story of it's just like thousands and thousands of little seven year old boys and girls jumping into pools, <laughs> and they go. China has. Uh, I think it was China has thousands of these sporting facilities across the world for every sport you can imagine. They've just applied the uh, the the sweatshop work ethic to diving and even weightlifting. China is dominating weightlifting in the the low weight classes. So like people who weigh less are lifting much more than everyone else because if you don't, we'll slap your mother in front of you when you're seven, and you'll go, <laughs> "You want your mom to stop crying? Fucking pick it up." And it's just, uh, it's just, and and how can you compete? You know, I think for too long Australia has been coasting with our water sports. All right, I think it's still working. We've been coasting with our water sports. All right, because we have a water culture. Everyone can swim. Everyone goes to the beach. And swimming's like so integrally part of our culture that just naturally you have a bunch of. Uh, naturally talented freaks that emerge and then you train them and at that at, when i watched the olympics and when i was watching the diving i'm like oh this is talent versus hard work and that's going to be the olympics for fucking ever is no nation can compete with the nation that is like what do you mean child welfare <laughs> why don't <laughs> like, what are you talking about friends what do you mean social life oh you have an injury Get in the pool. It's, you can't compete. Like I, dude, I'm telling you, unless America starts putting black people into the pools, it's China's game. It's over. There's no fucking way that anyone is gonna is gonna beat China at any sport that isn't running and like uh, heavyweight have weightlifting. It's it's over. China's gonna dominate. I've I, I was watching the diving and I was like, I need to learn Mandarin. Because they're doing that, but in every field. Shut the fuck up and become the best or else. How do you compete? Um, so you got to watch the women's diving. I can't wait to watch the men's. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it's the same shit. I bet it's some dude with 16 syllables in his name just fucking dunking on everyone else in the world and looking at his perfect 10 and going, I should have got a five. That dive sucked. The judges are wrong. You know what else was good about it is uh, I, I started to really enjoy it. So I'm like, oh, well, I think I would enjoy it more if I understood the, what, what they're scoring, like the actual thing. And, uh, dude, I read six different i'm not kidding i read six different articles on how they score diving and i watched like four tiktoks and i watch a video uploaded by the olympics explaining the scoring system and kind i'm telling you it's just the vibe they don't <laughs> they, there's nothing they couldn't tell me anything it was literally they they scored there's four categories one is is the approach like how they walk up to the diving board and and then and then they go okay yeah but what what's a good approach and all they all they really said was like uh, confidence all right so okay vibe the next one was the actual jump so like not the flips that you do in the air the actual jumping off the like that scored and is it as important as the flips that you do for some reason and again they couldn't tell me anything they were just like yeah don't be wobbly all right that's concrete don't do a wobbly like if you have to do a handstand to dive don't wobble i understand that then it was the actual diving part where they tell the judges i'm going to do this dive and it's this difficult and then they know how the dive should be done and they rate you on how well you do it but they don't have any rules on like it's bad if your knees do this or if your arms do like none of that it's just all vibe and then when you hit the water right everyone the ever, ever watching diving and all of the commentators are like, wow, look at that tiny little splash or, oh, that was such a big splash. That's bad. 
in the scoring, it says nothing about splashes at all. So the judges have just kind of gone, oh, big splash, bad, little splash, good, but it's not written down anywhere. So the whole system is arbitrary and all about vibe and Chinese women, sorry, Chinese children are crushing the vibes when it comes to diving. One of the best spectator sports because you get regular breaks as well and you get to judge the fuck out of an athlete that that really is, uh, <clears throat> no matter who you're watching, even the loser is just a superhuman amazingly talented beautiful person and you can look at their splash and go oh you fucked that up make you feel good about yourself sitting on the couch eating chips critiquing a 14 year old chinese girl what's crazy about it as well is um is and i'm i'm at, at this I, I, w I would like you all to know that from this point on in my discussion about the women's diving i'm not talking about the chinese girls at all in fact i don't even i didn't even know that they were there what's amazing about the the most impressive thing i thought about the women's diving was uh uh no one's pussy came out of their suit no one those little one-piece suits i don't know how to do it because that's another thing it's it's an uh, it's clearly i mean you look at the suits that they wear it's clearly an unspoken rule to wax your pussy before you like i reckon the diving is going to be one of one of the only sports where you gotta wax your balls before <laughs> into the sport mm. you know the weightlifters they're going up full bush for sure you know i reckon i reckon a little bit of pubic bush gives you just like a tiny negligible but still countable amount of thrust when you when you when you thrust the weight up so a bit of bush is good but there's 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 got, that's got to be one of the only sports where you you just gotta you have to wax you but i would dude i would love to see one of the girls go up there just full bush not from like, like i just not from a sexual point of view just from like just to see what would happen like would the commentator say anything <laughs> you know like like a full fucking 80s porn star bush that goes halfway down the thigh that would be really funny and just because here's the thing here's why i was amazed at the 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 confidence of these of these women divers they get up in these one pieces and there's a really common dive that they did which was a handstand dive right so they go all the way up to the diving board and then they face away from the pool and then they touch the the diving board with their hands and then they slowly walk their hands up to where their feet are and then they really slowly like beautifully amazing core strength lift their legs up but before they lift their legs up there's about 15 seconds where they are just showing hole to the camera and the crowd and what I love about being in this industry and because I've also filmed a comedy special, when there's lots of cameras filming a live event, every camera operator, uh, they only know what's going on in their camera and they're filming the whole time. From their point of view, they're filming the entire time. So it, it will be some guy's job to be the underwater cam. Like his job is to follow them as they fall and then go underneath the water with them in time with them. And then there'll be another guy who his job is to film them from the side when they're on the diving board. <clears throat> but there's one guy who's right opposite the edge of the diving board and it's his job, right, to just film straight on <laughs> and this man the whole time even though you as the audience member is not seeing it on camera he is zooming in on hole mm. the whole time and these girls just have to do that and 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 it's the so there's that camera guy who it's his job he has to keep that camera right there okay while they're bent over and it's just bum and labia right imprint because it's 4K as well, all right? It's 4K. It's, we got good cameras now. This is this this what I thought was the most impressive part of the divers was just the confidence. Because, dude, I accidentally posted meat print through fucking shorts and I, I almost had a meltdown by myself. If I was getting up there in spandex and, and showing the outline of hole to a 4K camera that's live, you know, if, I'm, if, if my rim's on the Jumbotron, I don't know if I'm getting a 10, right? And... What I noticed was because I know the industry, right? There's these camera guys, as I said, the camera operators, they've got one job and they're looking at one thing. They don't know what the audience is seeing. That's another guy's job. He's on a switcher <clears throat> and it's his job. He's got, everyone has him in his ear and he's going, uh, camera three, 
get this, camera four, you're not getting the shot that I want, blah, blah, blah. And he's telling them what to do. And then it's his job to, to decide which camera angle gets presented to the viewer at home at what time. And dude, for a full, the full first third of this thing, because again, right? These are all professional camera operators. They're not professional women's diving filmers, right? They've probably never filmed this before in their life, right? So they don't know how this is supposed to be presented. And for the first third, the first 40 minutes easy of the semifinals, uh, whoever the live switcher was, he kept that rim shot on every single time. Those girls and women were doing the handstand and I was watching it going, I really feel like this is not how this time, like for God's sake, show it from the side. Cause that's not how I, I even want to see it. When they, when they lift their legs up, I want to see it from the side. Cause I want to see how fucking strong they are to very slowly lift their legs up over their head. But instead I'm just looking at what they had for lunch for like 30 seconds, no camera changes. And then I can only assume that the fucking Olympic committee director kicked down the door and was like, stop fucking showing that camera angle because I never saw it again. 40 minutes into the in the, the semi-final, we never saw that camera angle ever, ever again when they did that dive. And then for the final, we didn't see it ever again. So, so I know that someone was like, Jim, for fuck's sake, stop showing that angle when they do the handstand dive. And that just made me laugh. Mm. So you gotta watch the women's diving. Those Chinese children are fucking ruthless. It's incredible. I was really impressed, and then I watched the how they train them, and then I felt really sorry for them. I was like, oh no, she's got another 10. Poor girl. So anyway, that's what I that's what I've been doing with my week, guys. Uh, I think I'm gonna end it there because uh, that's all the energy that I have for this episode. If you want more, uh, there's an episode up right now on Patreon. Sorry, this uh, this was late. I had all the surgery shit, and uh, yeah, it's just it takes it out of me. But a uh, couple more weeks, uh, and and it'll be over for me and uh, and for you. So enjoy your time with your women. Uh, I'll see them very soon. Thank you very much for listening uh, and uh, supporting the show on Patreon. It really, really helps, especially now when I can't work like I would like to. I'll see you over on Patreon. I uh, hope you have a shit one. Bye.